181 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Holdi file, where the concern was that there was an inconsistent use of named return variables across the code base that affected explicitness and readability. The recommendation was to consider removing all named return variables, explicitly declaring them as local variables in the function body, and adding the necessary explicit return statements where appropriate. This is related to function return values in 142, explicit over implicit in 164, and clarity issues in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 model. 182 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Holdify, where the concern was that as part of some calculations and time checks, it used block timestamp, which is unreliable because timestamps can be slightly altered by miners to favor them in contracts that have logic depending strongly on them. The recommendation was to consider taking into account this issue and warning users that such a scenario was possible. And if the alteration of timestamps couldn't affect the protocol in any way, to consider documenting that reasoning and writing tests to enforce that those guarantees would be preserved even if the code changed in future. This is related to weak PRNG and block values as type proxies in 17 and 18 of Security Pitfalls and Best Practices 201 module and broader aspects of trusted actors in 160 and timing issues in 177 of Security Pitfalls and Best Practices 201 module. 183 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Barn Bridge where the concern was about a required statement that made an assignment which deviates from standard usage and intention of required statements and could lead to confusion. The recommendation was to consider moving the assignment to its own line before the required statement and then using the required statement only for condition checking. This is related to assert required state change in 51 of security pitfalls and best practices 101 module and broader aspects of error reporting in 175 and clarity issues in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 184 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Palmbridge, where the concern was about commented code, in that the code base had lines of code that had been commented on. This could lead to confusion and affected code readability and auditability. The recommendation was to consider removing commented out lines of code that were no longer needed. This is related to comments in 154 and clarity issues in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 185 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Compound, where the concern was about misleading revert messages. Error messages are intended to notify users about failing conditions and should provide enough information so that appropriate corrections needed to interact with the system can be applied. Uninformative error messages affect user experience. The recommendation therefore was to consider reviewing the code base to make sure error messages were informative and meaningful and also reuse error messages for similar conditions. This is related to error reporting issues in 175, clarity issues in 188 and principle of psychological acceptability in 199 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 186 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of FAE protocol where the concern was about multiple outdated Solidity versions being used across contracts. The compiler options in the Truffle config file specified version 0.6.6 .6, which was released in April 2020 and throughout the code base there were also different versions of Solidity being used. The recommendation was that given Solidity's fast release cycle to consider using a more recent version of the compiler and specifying explicit Solidity versions in Pragma statements to avoid unexpected behavior. This is related to Solidity versions, unlock Pragma 
and multiple solidity pragmas in 1, 2, and 3 of Security Pitfalls and Best Practices 101 module, and explicit over implicit in 164, configuration in 165, and dependency issues in 183 of Security Pitfalls and Best Practices 201 module. 187 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's Audit of Fade Protocol, where the concern was about test and production constants being in the same code base. For example, the core orchestrator contract defined the test mode Boolean variable, which was then used to define several other test constants in the system. This decreased the legibility of production code and made the system's integral values more error -proof. The recommendation was to consider having different environments for production and testing with different contracts. This is related to tests in 155 and configuration issues in 165 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 188 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of FAPE protocol where the concern was about the use of unnecessarily smaller sized integer variables. In Solidity, using integers smaller than 256 bits, which is the EVM word size, tends to increase gas costs because the EVM must then perform additional operations to zero or mask out the unused bits in remaining parts of storage slots for such integers. This can be justified by savings in storage costs in some scenarios. However, that was not the case for this code base. The recommendation was to consider using integers of size 256 bits to improve gas efficiency. This is related to system specification in 136 and principle of economy of mechanism in 197 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 189 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of A protocol where the concern was the use of UIN instead of UIN256 across the code base. The recommendation was to consider replacing all instances of UINT with UINT256 in favor of explicitness. This is related to explicit over implicit in 164 and clarity in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 190 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of UMA protocol where the concern was about functions with unexpected side effects. For example, the get latest funding rate function of the funding rate applier contract might also update the funding rate and send rewards. The get price function of the optimistic oracle might also settle a price request. These setter like side effect actions were not clear in the getter like names of functions and were thus unexpected and could lead to mistakes if the code were to be modified by new developers not experienced in all the implementation details of the project. The recommendation was to consider splitting such functions into separate getters and setters or alternatively consider renaming the functions to describe all the actions that they performed. This is related to broad aspects of programming style, code layout and naming convention in 97 to 101 of Solidity 101 module and Clarity in 188, Principle of Economy of Mechanism in 197 and Principle of Psychological Acceptability in 199 that we discussed in Security Pitfalls and Best Practices 201 module. 191 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of GB protocol where the concern was about unsafe casting. For example, one of the contracts used an unsigned integer which was cast to a signed integer and then negated. However, since uint could store higher values than int, it was possible that casting from uint to int may have created an overflow. The recommendation was to consider verifying that values of such unsigned integers were within the acceptable range for signed integer type before casting and negating and to consider using Open Zeppelin's safe cast library which provides functions for safely casting between types. This is related to Open Zeppelin's safe cast in 177 of Solidity 201 module, integer overflow underflow in 
19 or security pitfalls and best practices 101 module and broader aspects of data validation and numerical issues in 169 and 170 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 192 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of GB protocol where the concern was about missing error messages in required statements. There were many places where required statements were correctly followed by their error messages, clarifying what the triggered exception was. However, there were also places where required statements were not followed by corresponding error messages. If any of those required statements were to fail the checked condition, the transaction would revert silently without an informative error message. The recommendation was to consider including specific and informative error messages in all required statements. This is related to error reporting issues in 175, clarity issues in 188 and principle of psychological acceptability in 199 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 193 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of GB protocol where the concern was about the use of assembly in multiple contracts. While this did not pose a security risk per se, it was in a complicated and critical part of the system. And recall that the use of assembly discards several important safety features of Solidity, which may render the code unsafe and more error prone. The recommendation, therefore, was to consider implementing thorough tests to cover all potential use cases of these functions to ensure that they behaved as expected and to consider including extensive documentation regarding the rationale behind its use, clearly explaining what every single assembly instruction does, which would make it easier for users to trust the code, for reviewers to verify it and for developers to build on top of it or update it. This is related to assembly usage in 63 of security pitfalls and best practices 101 module and broader aspects of system documentation in 137, tests in 155, clarity in 188, and principle of psychological acceptability in 199 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 194 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of GB protocol, where the concern was about catch clause not being handled appropriately. In a couple of functions, the catch clause of Solidity's try-catch exception handling primitive was neither emitting events nor handling the error, but simply continuing the execution. The recommendation was that even if continuing execution after a possible fail was something explicitly wanted, to consider handling the catch clause by either emitting an appropriate event or registering the failed try-call in the spirit of the fail early and loudly principle. This is related to error reporting in 175, clarity in 188 and principle of psychological acceptability in 199 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 195 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of GB protocol where the concern was about unnecessary event emission. For example, the pop dead from Q function of the accounting engine contract was emitting an unnecessary event whenever it was called with a dead block timestamp that had not been saved before. The recommendation was to remove such event emits and prevent gas wastage. This is related to redundant constructs in 157 of security pitfalls and best practices 201. 196 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Open Gamma protocol, where the concern was that the protocol's O token could be created with a non whitelisted collateral asset. A product consisted of a set of assets and an option type, and each product had to be whitelisted by the admin using the whitelist product function from the whitelist contract. The recommendation was to consider validating if the assets involved in a product had already been whitelisted before allowing creation of O tokens. This is related to aspects of carded launch via composability limit in 132, token handling in 159, 
external interactions in 180 and dependency issues in 183 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 197 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Open Gamma Protocol where the concern was about mismatches between contracts and interfaces. Interfaces define the exposed functionality of implemented contracts. However, in several interfaces, there were functions from the counterpart contracts that were not defined. The recommendation was to consider applying necessary changes in the mentioned interfaces and contracts so that definitions and implementations fully match. This is related to system specification in 136, undefined behavior in 179, and clarity issues in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 198 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Open Gamma protocol, where the concern was about inconsistent state resulting from actions not executed atomically. For context, the set asset pricer, set locking period and set dispute period functions of the Oracle contract executed actions that were always expected to be performed atomically. Failing to do so could lead to inconsistent states in the system. The recommendation was therefore to consider implementing an additional function that calls all three set asset pricer, set locking period and set dispute period functions so that all these actions could be executed atomically in a single transaction. This is related to function invocation timeliness in 143, configuration and initialization in 165 and 166, timing in 177 and undefined behavior issues in 179 of security pitfalls and best practices 201. 199 is another finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of Open Gamma protocol where the concern was about using a deprecated Chainlink API. The Chainlink pricer was using multiple functions from a deprecated Chainlink V2 API such as latest answer and get timestamp. Such functions might suddenly stop working if Chainlink stopped supporting deprecated APIs. The recommendation was to consider using the latest Chainlink V3 API. This is related to external interaction in 180 and dependency issues in 183 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 200 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of pulled together V3 protocol, where the concern was that funds could be lost. For context, the sweep time lock balances function accepted a list of users with unlocked balances to distribute. However, if there were duplicate users in the list, their balances would be counted multiple times while calculating the total amount of withdraw from the yield service, which could lead to loss of their funds. The recommendation was to consider checking for duplicate users when calculating the amount to withdraw. This is related to token handling in 159 and numerical and accounting issues in 170 and 171 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. 201 is a finding from Open Zeppelin's audit of set protocol where the concern was about clearing address variables by setting them to zero addresses instead of using delete. The recommendation was to consider replacing assignments of zero with delete statements because delete better conveyed the intention and was also more idiomatic. This is related to explicit over implicit in 164, cleanup in 167 and clarity issues in 188 of security pitfalls and best practices 201 module. So with that, we have come to the end of the eighth and final module on audit findings 201 where we reviewed highlights of another 100 findings focused on medium to low severity, informational best practice guidelines, and some of the more application level business logic and software engineering aspects to get critical perspectives from them. We then connected them to concepts from solidity and security pitfalls and best practices of earlier modules. So hopefully we now have a much better appreciation for such application level business logic software engineering best practices and guidelines 
that are not immediately identifiable as vulnerabilities leading to fund, loss, lock, etc. but are nevertheless critical to adhere to so that they do not translate into critical vulnerabilities unknowingly or at a later time under some assumptions, considerations, interactions or threat trust models not considered by the developers or the auditors. I would again like to strongly recommend reading the audit reports reference for these findings to get a deeper understanding of the protocol logic context and the details behind the reported findings where we have only touched upon some key highlights here in the interest of breadth of coverage and time constraints for them. Congratulations on finishing all the eight modules of the bootcamp and thanks for listening.